Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have an interesting area. We have an area that's bounded by the curve y equals kx squared. The width from the y-axis to the edge here is w. The height from here to there is h. And we're trying to find the radius of gyration, which is the distance to a strip that would represent the total area of this figure right here and placed at a distance so that the moment of inertia of the strip would be exactly the same as the moment of inertia of our figure right here. And so what do we need to do first? We first find the moment of inertia of the figure and then we find the radius of gyration by setting the moment of inertia of the strip equal to the moment of inertia of the figure. Before we can start, we need to find the value for k. We have y equals kx squared, but we realize here that when y is equal to h, x must be equal to w. And if we plug those into our equation right here, we can then say that y, we replace y by h, so h is equal to k times x squared, but since x is w, that is w squared, or k is equal to h divided by w squared. We're going to need that later on. So now we're going to find the moment of inertia of this particular shape. So i with respect to x is equal to the integral of a small little area element. So we're going to find a small little area element right here. We're going to call that dA. And dA is equal to the width times the height. Now the distance of that strip is going to be equal to y. And the thickness of that strip is going to be dy. And so dA is going to be the width, which is w minus x, w minus x, multiplied times the thickness, which is dy. So now we're going to find the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis by taking the distance of that strip, which is y squared, and multiplying it times dA. And we're going to integrate it from y equals 0 to y equals h. So plugging in what dA is equal to, so and going down a little ways because I'm running out of room, it's equal to the integral from 0 to h of y squared times dA is w minus x times dy. Now we're not quite there yet, ready to integrate because I have an x in my integral here. So I have to replace that by what x is equal to. And we can get that from the equation up here. So let's see here. We have x squared is equal to y divided by k. Of course, we know that k is equal to this. And that means that x is equal to y to the 1 half power divided by k to the 1 half power. So that needs to go in here. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to h of y squared times w minus and instead of x, we're going to write y to the 1 half power divided by k to the 1 half power. And that whole thing is times dy. And now we have an integral we can integrate. So we probably want to separate that into two separate integrals. So this can be written as w times the integral of y squared dy. I moved the w out the integral sign from 0 to h minus... We can now pull out the 1 over k to the 1 half power times the integral of y squared times y to the 1 half, which is y to the 5 halves power times dy, also integrated from 0 to h. Now we can integrate. So this becomes equal to, the first integral becomes w times y cubed evaluated from 0 to h. Should be a bigger 0 right there. Minus, we have 1 over, oop, wait a minute, this is y cubed over 3. Can't forget the over 3. There we go. So we have 1 over k to the 1 half times, now we integrate y to the 5 halves, that comes y to the 7 halves, divided by 7 halves, evaluated from 0 to h. Okay. Evaluate it, when we plug in the lower limit, we get zero. Plug in the upper limit, we get, here we get one third w h cubed minus. Now, k to the one half, 
Well, when we look up there, we have k is equal to h over w, so k to the one half would be h to one half over w, but since it's one over that, we can take the inverse of that, so it would be minus w over h to the one half power, which is one over k to the one half times. Oh, well, let's see here. Before we do that, I want to also grab my seven over two, and since it's a denominator, I take the inverse of that, so it would be times two over seven, and we have y to the 7 halves evaluated from 0 to h. That gives us h to the 7 halves. Now here things are starting to look a little bit better because notice that we have an h to the 1 half, h to the 7 halves, that comes h to the 6 halves, which is the same as h cubed. So this becomes equal to 1 third w h cubed. That would be minus 2 sevenths w h cube. Now all we have to do is find the common denominator which looks like it's 21 so this becomes equal to 7 over 21 w h cubed minus that would be 6 over 21 w h cubed so eventually we end up with 1 over 21 w h cubed as the moment of inertia of this shape right here relative to the x-axis. All right, 1 over 21, does that seem about right? Well, if this was a rectangle, just to kind of get a feel for it, if it was a rectangle rotating around like that, that would give us, let's see, 1 third wh cubed. So instead of 1 third, we get 1 over 21. That seems about right since most of our mass of the figure is very close to the x-axis. So at least it seems reasonable. Now we need to find the radius of gyration. We're going to take the shape and turn it into a thin strip. Where should we place the strip? At what distance away from the x-axis? That would be the radius of gyration, so that we get the same moment of inertia. Which means the moment of inertia that we found for the figure here, I sub x, is going to be equal to the radius of gyration squared times the area of the strip, which is the same as the area of that little figure. That's the area which means that the radius of gyration is equal to the square root of, and that would be equal to of the moment of inertia divided by the area. I got to do one more thing. I need to know the area of that figure, and so again, I'll need another integral. So again, I'm going to find the dA right here, and so to find the area that is going to be equal to the integral, of the dA, which is equal to the integral of w minus x times dy, and since I'm integrating over dy, I'm going to integrate from 0 to h, and instead of x, I'm going to need the x equivalent, which is going to be y to the 1 half divided by k to the 1 half. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to h of w minus, instead of x, we're going to write y to the 1 half divided by k to the 1 half, and I'm going to integrate that times dy from 0 to h. And so that we don't get too confused here, I'm going to use a different color, that, so you can see that we're now going to work out that integral, so this is going to be equal to w times y evaluated from 0 to h minus 1 over k to the 1 half. Well, 1 over k to the 1 half is equal to w over h to the 1 half. So that will be w over h to the 1 half. That's the same as 1 over k to the 1 half. We have the negative over here. y to the 1 half dy integrated becomes y to the 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2 evaluated from 0 to h which is going to be wh minus, and of course wh would be the area of that rectangle, minus, and then we get the following, we have w over h to the 1 half times 2 over 3, because 1, over th 1 divided by 3 over 2 is the same as multiply times 2 over 3, and then we have y to the, or that now becomes h to the 3 over 2. 
but h to the 3 over 2 divided by h to the 1 half, this cancels, this becomes h to the first power, and now we have wh minus 2 thirds wh, which is equal to 1 third wh. Now that's kind of an interesting result, which means that if we have the rectangle wh, this area right here is 2 thirds wh, and this area here is 1 third wh. So now we have the area of our figure, we have the moment of inertia that we have over there. So now this becomes equal to the square root of the moment of inertia, which is 1 over 21 wh cubed divided by the area, which is 1 third wh. Notice that the w's cancel out, and this h cancels out one of those h's, and so this gives us the result of the square root of 3 over 21, that would be h squared. Of course, the square root of h squared is h, and 3 divided by 21 is 1 7, so this is equal to the square root of 1 over 7 times h. That would be the distance you want to place a strip, so that when you rotate about the x-axis, you get the very same moment of inertia. Now, what is 1 divided by 7? Take the square root, 1 divided by 7, take the square root, that gives us 0 0.378, 0 0.378 h, and that would be the location of the strip, so that you get exactly the same moment of inertia. Or, another way of saying this, we take this figure right here, and take the whole figure, and it's as if all the area was concentrated along this strip, a distance of 0.378 h away from the x-axis. And that's what we mean by the radius of gyration. And it's actually correct.